Okay, good people, we are back on my porch. Finally, the heat has relented in Seville, Spain. And I can sit out here without baking, without sweat pouring off of my face. When I first decided to settle here in 2007, 2008, I had to make some big decisions. And one of those decisions was how to winnow down my library. I was moving into my wife's apartment. She had generously set aside some nooks and crannies for me, but I had a library of over a thousand books back home on Staten Island, New York, and I just couldn't take it all with me. I could only take a very, very small portion of it. So I decided that I would only take books. It ended up being around 50 that had left me with a feeling, a feeling that I thought I might like to return to one day. And one of those books, which had left me with a feeling of nostalgia for the 1980s, when I had come of age as a young man, first in high school and then in college. And a nostalgia that carried a kind of even greater clarity and comfort than the nostalgia a song might give me simply because a song really only lasts four minutes, whereas a book, I can make it last as long as I like, days if I wish. And also I think books provoke more thought than songs do. But anyway, it was the feeling. And the book that left me with that feeling was a memoir by Rich Cohen called Lake Effect. And it was first published in 2002 by Knopf. Lake Effect is about a kid named James Drew, or Drewlicious, that's his nickname, who basically peaked too soon, who peaked in high school, where his, according to Cohen, words and gestures swept the school like a craze, imitated even by teachers. The type of kid, again in Cohen's words, who, when you looked in the mirror, you hoped to see looking back at you, but who, in the end, just didn't have the patience or stamina to be an adult. I think we've all known people like this. And this is a book about what it's like to be that kid's best friend. And then over time, surpass him, surpass your idol, at least in the world's eyes if not your own. To me, it is extremely difficult to write a book like this, dripping with feeling, a pastoral, and even more difficult to do it at such a young age. This book was published when Rich Cohen was, I think, 34 years old, but he writes near the end of this book about the writing of it. And it seems as though the meat of it, if not the final form, came out of him right after college. I mean, very few writers, I repeat, have the chops, the talent, the detachment, the guts. Although maybe when Rich Cohen wrote this book, he didn't realize how difficult it is to write a book about that first feeling of youth having passed us by. In making those feelings, which are often tied to youthful superficiality, make them feel deep and worthy of going back to again and again. He'll write about going to a Cubs game Glencoe is a posh suburb of Chicago, right on Lake Michigan, so he'll write about going to the game, sitting in the stands, talking to the girls behind him, getting home, make all of it memorable. He'll write about the first night he gets drunk under Drew Licious's watch. He'll write about the Mardi Gras. He'll write about getting high on ecstasy at the Mardi Gras. He went to Tulane University. There's a great line about how the Mardi Gras is a night that lasts six days. You know, both of these places, even now, 
but especially when he was writing about them, Glencoe and Tulane, they're bastions of privilege, man. But even when this book came out, bastions of privilege were not looked upon with scorn. They were admired, and perhaps rightly so, because the people living there, especially the parents of these kids, or the people who sent their kids there, they worked hard to get to get there, you know? The book reads edgy, especially nowadays, when he writes about unabashedly about how he and Drew Licious finagled consent for their sexual experiences with girls. Every girl kind of fed their hunger for new experience, even though each new girl was seduced with the same lines and the same tricks. He doesn't judge himself. He doesn't condemn his youthful self. He also doesn't trot out these shenanigans as something to brag about. Perhaps if he wrote the book today, in the current climate, he would write it differently. I'm very glad then that he wrote it when he did. And although I will say that if one of these doctrinaire, spinsterish, humorless, Amazon and Goodreads reviewers, you know the type I'm talking about, gets a hold of this book, Rich Cohen is going to rack up a bunch of one-star reviews for being toxically masculine and obsolete. That would be, depending on how you look at it, either hilarious or a shame, but whatever the case, it would be missing the point. Lake Effect, like I say, was a very risky book to write, whether he realized it or not, because it's about his youthful antics and sentiments, his triumphs and defeats. It could very easily have turned either saccharine or sophomoric, and I don't think it did. You know, it reminded me, in a way, the feeling it left me with, of the feeling John Knowles, a separate piece left me with when I read it in my early teens, or the feeling the early books of S. E. Hinton left me with. You know, The Outsiders, that was then, this is now, Rumblefish Tex. I suspect that Rich Cohen read and enjoyed those books as much as I did. And they're all, in a way, about people, times, events, that pass us by before we've had our fill of them, and therefore, in a way, will forever be heartbreaking to us as we think back on them. Rich Cohen is a consecrated and established writer. These days, he's got a column in the Wall Street Journal. He has written for The New Yorker. He was or is a contributing editor for Vanity Fair and Rolling Stone. He worked with Martin Scorsese on the HBO series Vinyl. He's written a lot of books, both memoir and in-depth journalism. His two most recent books are The Adventures of Herbie Cohen, World's Greatest Negotiator, about his dad. Okay, that came out in 2022. And his dad is a real character in Lake Effect, too. And then in 2023, he wrote When the Game Was War, the NBA's Greatest Season, which is about 1987, when all of the, let's say, seminal stars of, of professional basketball were still in the league. Magic Johnson on the Los Angeles Lakers, Larry Bird on the Boston Celtics, Isaiah Thomas on the Detroit Pistons, and a young Michael Jordan on the Chicago Bulls, and they fought it out that year. I think the Lakers beat the Detroit Pistons four games to three in the final, but I guess for Rich Cohen, it represents the NBA when it was its roughest and truest. But although I've got a wide variety of books by Rich Cohen to 
choose from and to enjoy, I will always remember him very fondly for Lake Effect. I've read it three times. I'm sure I'll go back to it again. Check it out, you know. I suspect that it will strike a chord and who knows, it might even might even reduce you to tears. <laughs>